Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. We're going to continue on with our mathematics lessons here. And now that we know how to figure out molar mass from the last lesson, uh, I'm going to show you a neat little trick just to uh, back calculate the percent composition of each element in a compound. And it's as simple as you think it would be. You know, imagine a bag of groceries uh, and uh, figuring out the mass of each type of grocery in the bag. It's the same sort of idea. So we're going to meet the percents. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was oh, that was, that was good. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. Ah, yeah. That's, oh. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's a, oh, that's good. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> So what we can do is we can figure out the relative mass of each, and, and it's the same as figuring out uh, percents of anything. Um, so what we'll do is uh, we, will, we will determine the chemical formula um, if it's not given to you already, and then we will figure out the molar mass of that formula, assuming we have one mole of it. And then what we'll just do is we'll just take the same work we're doing and we'll just, uh, you know, uh, ride coattails off that work. And then what we'll do is we'll find the percent composition of each element in that compound. Um, so again, if you can imagine if something's, you know, uh, if, there's, if you have a 100 gram molar mass and something's 40 grams of that, that's 40%. So it's pretty straightforward. And then you can double check and make sure your work adds up to 100%. Now that's not going to catch all your mistakes. If you write the wrong formula, uh, then you will find the right percent composition of the wrong formula. So double checking your work is always handy, but it isn't going to catch every mistake that you make. So once again, naming is just uh, really, really a non-negotiable uh, with, with this kind of stuff. you got to name stuff correctly. So let's look at an example here. So what's the percent composition of sodium carbonate? All right, so we know that sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. Um, carbonate's got a negative 2 charge, so we will need two sodiums to balance out that uh, positive 1, positive 1. Uh, and so what we do next is then we figure out the molar mass. So if you want to pause the video and figure out the molar mass here, I think that would be a great idea. And then what we'll do is I'll, I'll walk through it, showing a little bit more work. Welcome back. So remember, the first thing we do for molar mass is figure out how many moles of each. We're going to pretend that we have uh, one mole of sodium carbonate. It doesn't matter. And, and again, one of the big uh, red herrings is to give you a mass. Um, uh, but that's not going to really do you any good. Uh, you, you need to find the relative mass of each element in the compound. All right. So we're going to take the moles of each, and we'll figure out the grams of each, just like we did before. Again, I take my stuff off to the hundreds place for practice problems, but you can do what you want. Remember also, if you're just you know, working on a multiple choice exam or just doing this for yourself, you don't have to show all this work for molar mass. Uh, but we go through it because it's easy to build off this work, and it's a good practice of significant figures. It's good practice of factor label and um, also scientific notation at times. So I, I prefer to, when you're practicing, work through it all and show all your work. Anyway, so we have uh, two moles of sodium, one mole of carbon, three moles of oxygen. You can just add all those up, or you can do the factor label and get the molar mass of sodium carbonate being uh, 105.99 grams per mole. Now that's where we got to last time. And so all we're going to do now to find the percent composition is we've got the, uh, if you look, you'll see that we have the mass of each element and we have the total mass of the uh, compound. So we're just going to take the mass of each element and divide it by the total mass and then multiply it by 100%. And we're going to do that each time. And that's it. That's how easy it is to just uh, tack on to your work for a molar mass. Uh, so your work sort of pays off here. Anyway, so when we do this based on the sig figs of each of these, we're going to end up with these percents. 43.38%, uh, 11.33%, and 45.29%. And so we can check our work, add those up. Those do add up to be 100% which is always nice. And so that's, that's really what you're going to do there, is you're just going to uh, figure out your molar mass, divide each of those element masses by the total mass, and then you're good to go. Okay? Um, so one real quick thing before we go, I just wanted to talk about something called hydrates. You might run into these occasionally. Uh, don't get scared when you run into a hydrate formula. Hydrates are simply ionic compounds that have incorporated water into their crystal lattice. Um, and you can tell how these are written because you'll see a formula and then you'll see a dot and then you'll actually see a coefficient and a certain number of water molecules. And this is one of the rare times you actually see a coefficient in 
a chemical formula. Usually coefficients only exist before chemical formulas in a balanced chemical equation. But what this is trying to say is that for every uh, one of those compounds, uh, you have six water molecules uh, incorporated into the crystal lattice. Uh, the neat thing about hydrates is that they, they don't look wet, they feel dry. Um, and they're often very brightly colored once the water gets incorporated into the, into the compound. They can be used as desiccants uh, if it's in the an anhydrous form. So if you have one of these compounds without uh, the water in it, uh, it will absorb the water out of the air and dry the air out. That's a desiccant. Uh, desiccants, the same sort of thing happens when you uh, drop your cell phone in the toilet and then they say put it in a container of dry rice. Uh, not wet rice, not cooked rice, because uh, rice acts like a natural desiccant also. It absorbs uh, water from the environment and it could pull the water out of your phone. I'm not saying it's going to work, but it, you know, based on informal surveys, it seems to work more times than it doesn't. Um, same as those silicon things that you'll find in your shoes when you buy them, do not eat, or in the beef jerky container, it says do not eat. Those are trying to draw moisture out of the air. And so they're usually some kind of desiccant. Sometimes they can be hydrates that absorb it. So, uh, so that's about it for today. Uh, we, got a, we got a few more uh, hilarious uh, science-related movie names here. Showing my age there with Lab Boys, too. I don't know if my audience is going to get that one. Again, pretty, pretty old <laughs> movie there. Anyway, so that's it. That's a pretty straightforward lesson. Hope you enjoyed watching. Um, uh, go ahead and practice. You can even try figuring out the uh, uh, molecular mass and percent composition of that hydrate. That would be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll see you next time. We'll keep moving forward and, uh, and uh, continuing with some of this compositional mathematics. Have a great day.